Hi everyone and welcome to day four of my Colt starting program with my filly Chobit. Today I'm going to be showing you guys saddle breaking which should be very exciting. So I'm going to walk you through my tools. The first thing I'm going to be using on her are these professional choice bell boots and these are going to protect her ankles and fetlocks from overreach. I'm also going to be supporting her splint joints and also just protecting her legs a little bit with these classic equine easy wrap splint boots. And I will also be using a rope halter and lead. Um, if you do use one of these, which I highly recommend doing, you'll definitely want to make sure you tie it correctly. My saddle is a team roping saddle. It's a dynamite horseman supply and it's about 14 5 inch seat. And I'm going to be using these awesome wool pads when I ride as well. And these are five star team roping wool pads. So I'm going to start with Chobit in the middle of the round pen. And I'm just going to let her familiarize herself with the tack. Now I'm cutting a lot of this out just for time length purposes. But you're really going to want to allow your horses the opportunity to explore the saddle and explore the pad on the ground. Also pick it up and hold it around them and kind of smack it like I'm doing here and just really let them get used to it before you start throwing it up on top of their backs. So I'm going to start by throwing the pad over her back and then removing it. So I'm going to give her a little bit of pressure with something she's not familiar with. Leave it up there for a second or two, pad on it, let her know that it's not a scary object and it's not going to hurt her. And then I'm going to give her that release and pull it off. And Something I really like to do is also to walk them around with the pad on just to kind of see what they're going to do and what their reaction is going to be. You can see there she's still really interested in the saddle. So I'm going to swing that pad up and then I'm going to go ahead and pick up my saddle. And I'm also going to allow her to smell the saddle in my hands and to kind of familiarize herself with it. Shake it around, let it make some noise, and just let her familiarize herself with exactly what it is. And I really don't creep around her. I'm just going to pull all of my straps and stirrups up and I'm going to go to her side and just toss this up onto her back. We've done a lot of desensitizing to prepare for this moment so that when we do throw the saddle up over her back, she's not encouraged to just run away bucking or to freak out and try to squirt out from under it. She's really used to us trying to expose her to new things and to draping things over her and putting things on her back. So by putting the saddle up on her at this point, she's pretty familiar with these sorts of weird gestures and movements and she should accept it pretty well. So now that I've got her completely cinched up, I'm going to take her off the lead line. And I highly recommend doing this. Some people like to leave them on a ledge line and they think that gives them a little bit more control. But the reality of it is, they're first saddling, you don't have a ton of control. And I would much rather be completely safe during this process than try to think that I have some illusion of controlling what the horse is going to do. So. After I take her off the lead line, I'm very cautious, sort of looking over my shoulder with one eye, but I start to walk around and let her hook onto me and just sort of feel the saddle up there and walk around with it, make it very calming and very relaxing. Because when she does go to move off, either at a trot or especially at a canter, and she feels those cinches pressuring on her and grabbing her, I can guarantee you that she is going to freak out. And again, just make sure you're in a safe position because at any moment she could feel that saddle in a different way and decide to just crack in half. So I just very, very, very gently sent her there. It was just so subtle and so submissive. I wanted her to know that I wanted her to move off, but it wasn't anything where I was trying to entice her to buck. But you can see there, as soon as that saddle started to grab her, she just sort of broke in half there a little bit. And this is where it's going to be crucial to try to get them to think. So I'm just stepping out in front of her over and over and changing her directions until that back becomes less humped up and she can just move forward fluidly. 
See right there, she completely stopped bucking and now she's moving forward really nicely. So I'm not going to be changing her directions quite as frequently. When she first started bucking, I was asking her to change directions almost every couple strides because I really wanted to get back into her head and let her know like, hey, whatever's going on with the saddle is your deal, but you need to be listening to me right now and doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you can see it kind of grabbed her again right there, completely normal. She's going to go through phases where she will lope around here just fine, and then suddenly she'll try to buck it off again. And it's a completely normal reaction. She's just trying to be intelligent and work her th way through the pressure and see how she can possibly get it off of her. What we're trying to teach her though is that she can accept the saddle and it's gonna be a really nice part of her that's not going to hurt her or make her feel uncomfortable. And again, I just continue to send her around, changing her directions. And I'm just sort of looking for subtle cues that she's starting to move out freely. She's not getting as bound up or bucky, and she's just starting to relax. That's when I wanna give her that release. And that'll happen right here. Put my shoulder in, call her into the center, and pet her and give her that release. So in between this, I'm going to stop now and start desensitizing. I'm going to grab onto the stirrups, I'm going to pat all over the leather and the pad and sort of shake the saddle and pull on the cinches and make noise with it and sort of disturb the saddle on her back. I'm also going to go around her with my whip and I'm going to start spanking the ground. I'm going to start waving it over her and smacking around behind her feet and her head and also kind of moving the whip over the saddle as well. Just like with the Jeffries method, I'm gonna prepare her for movements that are going to be familiar with me actually mounting up. So I'm gonna be shaking and snapping these stirrups. I'm gonna be jumping around and kind of moving my arms around and just getting her very familiar with the fact that I have a lot of part in what the saddle is doing and it's pretty much just an extension of me as well as my whip. Again, just jumping around, lots of padding, and just showing her that the saddle is not a scary or dangerous thing. And of course, the release. Now that I've spent some time desensitizing, I'm going to send her off again. So it's been several minutes um, since she's been going around. So again, she kind of forgot the saddle and when it felt, when she felt the back cinch and the girth grab her and all the movements of the saddle, she did go to buck again. This is completely normal. A lot of people get really discouraged by that and they're like, what the heck, my horse isn't learning. They definitely are learning and especially by making mistakes, they're learning. So. Don't become discouraged if after round pending your horse you come back, you know, 10 minutes later and do it again and they just crack in half all over again like they didn't learn a thing. Um, or even the following day, I guarantee you for the next couple days she's probably going to hump up just knowing her personality and knowing the ways that she tries to associate pressure and release. And she's starting to lope around really freely here. I'm really liking how extended she is and how relaxed she's getting. So I'm gonna step in front and pull her into the center with me to give her that release and also just solidify a little bit of trust between us. And I'm gonna send her one last time and what I'm looking for is to be able to give her a few minutes in between sending, so to let her rest and breathe in the middle, and then send her off and have her be very relaxed and compliant and not to buck. So I did send her away, and she went around very, very calmly and willingly. I'm just looking for a good stopping point, so I'm going to call her in and reward that, and that's going to be where I'm going to take the saddle off and end this entire lesson.
You'll want to just be very abrupt with everything you do. Do everything normal. Don't creep around them or be worried that something weird's going to happen because you don't want that to carry over onto the horse. Saddle and unsaddle them just like you would your own horse. The only difference with a colt is going to be that you're probably not going to want to tie them up. I usually don't have her tied when I saddle or unsaddle just to prevent her from freaking out and setting back and making it a bad experience. And just like when we saddled her, I take it off and I let her examine it and smell it. And I just kind of leave her by herself in the round pen to examine the saddle and to kind of absorb our little lesson. So I hope that was really insightful. I'm sorry it wasn't super informational, but that's just my day one for saddle breaking. I will definitely be posting more videos in the saddle breaking process just because at this point she definitely is not ready for her first ride. But I'm hoping that within just a couple more sessions I will be able to get on and give her that first ride. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you all in the next video.